I, I do like to travel. I think I like going and experiencing places, and, and even more than traveling to some place, I like to live someplace and really, really get to know uh, the areas. I actually worked as a first mate on a sailboat, and we sailed up and down the East Coast, uh, a, lot of the, a lot of nice ports and everything with the, with the groups we took out. A number of years ago, I was a, a, a professor at the University of Innsbruck in Austria uh, for, for a summer. I, I taught wines uh, over there, wine, spirits, and beers. And I, I had a spot on the River Inn there, not too far from the classroom. The River Inn is, is always chilly, even in the summertime. And I would lower this bag of white wine in there, tie it off to a tree, and we'd go in and we'd have a, a, some lecture in the, in the classroom. Everybody would bring their glasses and we'd go down to the River Inn. And I'd pull the bag of uh, now just chilled white wines out of the river and uh, we would do a wine tasting right there. It was, it was a great experience. Uh, my name is Bill Quain. I'm a professor here at Stockton. I teach uh, hospitality and tourism management. Well, I'm actually what they call legally blind, which means uh, I'm completely blind in the center of my eyes and I can see a little bit around the outside. Uh, but I have a, a, a disease called macular degeneration. It's bad. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it, when you could, when you, if you think you, maybe you wouldn't be blind, that'd be much better. You miss out on a lot of stuff. I mean, uh, you know, you, you, don't get to, you don't get to see the nuances, people's faces, that sort of thing. So, especially like walking into a room full of people. Uh, I just, uh, I don't even know, you know, I, I can only see some shapes. So I never know who's there. Uh, I really hate name tags. People don't introduce themselves when they're wearing name tags. They just say, hi, and they go like that. On the other hand, you got to live your life. And so uh, you, uh, you start to you know, get more comfortable with things. You start to spend more time in your own head. Uh, I think I'm more amused at the world than most people are, uh, just because I imagine so many funny things are happening. I think that uh, that you know, uh, one of the things I do is I sort of funnel uh, my passions uh, in, into things that I, that, I, that I know I can pursue. Like for example, uh, you know what I've never developed a passion for? Uh, archery. Uh, race car driving. Not going to be a passion of mine. Uh, so, you know, what are, what are my passions? My passions are to secure my life uh, and, and to make my family uh, happy. Uh, so uh, I, I pursue them with a lot of uh, lot of vigor. Uh, I, I I'm very interested in wines and foods. Uh, I've run you know bars and restaurants. I've owned a bar. In 2001, uh, I was approached by some people about um, doing a cooking show for people who were blind who couldn't see well. Uh, the show, which appeared on uh, PBS and ran for a, a full season on PBS, is called uh, Cooking Without Looking. And uh, we showed people how, who can't see well how to cook better, because uh, you still got to eat. And we also showed them how to make their plates look nicer, even, even though they really couldn't see it, because you, you're not just serving blind people. If you're just serving blind people, it doesn't matter what the food looks like. But if you're having friends in. So the whole show was about uh, how, to, how to make people feel more comfortable in the kitchen who couldn't see well and or who were totally blind but also how to have, have great food and great hospitality. Because of my my eyesight problem I have to use some adaptations in the kitchen and, and by the way this is what we taught people in uh, cooking without looking is uh, is how to how to adapt to a kitchen. You know for example you can leave a a, a wooden spoon uh, in, a, in a pot uh, as, as, it's, as it's boiling or as it's sauteing or whatever, the wooden spoon doesn't heat up. I call a wooden spoon a, a kitchen cane. The other thing that I, I, I do myself and I teach other handicapped individuals to do who can't see well is you do a thing called mise en place. And that means, literally means made in place. And so what you do is you, you get everything together, everything measured, uh, you know, you read through your recipe, everything's set out, and then you put it in the order you're going to pick it up. So as I'm cooking, and I, I put them from left to right in the order I'm going to need them, as I'm cooking, I can just reach up there, find the next thing, uh, put it in, into, the, uh, into the pan. Nothing worse than being halfway through cooking something and realize you're missing an agreement, ingredient and, and you've got to run to the store, particularly if you can't drive. I'm a pretty public figure. Uh, and, and I, I get a lot of people 
I get a lot of people who come to me and say, you know, you, you, your story inspired me. And it's not, it's not because they're, they're blind, it's just because uh, people are motivated and impassioned by seeing someone who maybe transcends uh, some of the bounds that hold them uh, back as, as they pursue their, their goals and dreams in life. One, one, of, my, um, uh, one of our family's mottos is, uh, the least I'll do is whatever it takes. I gotta tell you, whether you're blind or you're deaf or whatever, uh, or you're, you're fully capable, uh, life is great. If you don't enjoy it, man, you're, you're missing the, the only one you're gonna get.